All right, everybody, what is up? What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. And um, look, first of all, let's just sort that shit out. Easy as that. Boom. <laughs> I'm wearing a beanie when it's 43 degrees Celsius outside, but because of my beautiful air conditioner, it's 21 in here, and it's fucking beautiful. Um, and it's the only reason why I'm actually able to wear a beanie right now, because... This has not come out for six months. Alice Springs, Alice Springs as a whole, is a very uh, it's a strange place, you know, but it's, if we're talking about weather, I mean strange as far as people go, but look, if we're talking about the weather, or if we're talking about Mother Nature, it's, it's, it's a place of extremes. In winter it gets freezing, but the days are so beautiful, the, the days are so crisp, the, the, there's no wind, it's, it's beautiful clear blue sky, not, not a cloud in the sky whether it's in summer or winter, it's just that in winter the, the overall temperature is nice and fresh, it's, you know, early 20s. Gets into summer, there's still no clouds in the sky, but the temperature basically doubles to like 40, 42, 43. So at the moment we're, you know, on a run of about two weeks worth of 40 plus degree heats, and uh, it's actually... Christmas Eve today. Yeah, we're right bang smack in the middle of summer and I hate it. <laughs> so that's why we're inside doing these reaction videos. I love winter here and that's that's the thing that I was going to say is that I absolutely love the winters in Alice Springs. That three month stretch from like May, June, July, even August um, into the start of September is, is it's beautiful and I guess if I could design my life, if I could custom design my life and my work schedule and you know where I could live. I'd live in Christchurch in New Zealand for six months throughout the summer where the days are fucking beautiful man the days are long at the moment you know in Christchurch where I'm from it's getting dark at shit I don't know 9 p.m. 9 30 p.m. which means that the evenings are long and you know it's not that really intense disgusting heat that we have here in Australia it's you know mid to high mid to high 20s sorry long nights Beautiful time to be in New Zealand. My ideal situation would be the six months of summer spend in New Zealand, the six months of winter spend in Alice Springs. And I would actually, you know, not mind spending it in Alice Springs and not even in Melbourne or Sydney or any, any of those other more popular places because the weather here is very unique and it's absolutely beautiful throughout the winter. And that's something I'll always say. And another thing I'll always say is that if anyone around Australia or New Zealand is ever struggling for work, come to Alice Springs, pay for your ticket, arrive here in Alice, and you've got a job within a week. Guaranteed. Guaranteed, guys. So anyone around Australia or New Zealand struggling for work, I will always recommend Alice Springs as a springboard. It's, it's a place where you can come and reset and reevaluate, save a bit of money, and then move on. That's what a lot of people do. It's just, I got stuck here for nine long years. So, anyway, another thing that helps me pass the time whilst I'm here in Alice Springs, with not a lot else to do, is to smoke a little bit of, a little bit of weed, a little bit of ganja, uh, a little bit of pot, a little bit of dank, a few spots here and there, a few buckies, a few bongs, a few joints. Uh, never had a dab though. Never had a dab. That's one thing I and still yet to try, but what I am going to do guys, this year, January the 1st, I will be embarking on another 30 day self-imposed uh, break from smoking weed. And um, you know, I've been through it all, I've been through the roller coaster of being a, a marijuana addict, you know, for reasons that each individual have. My reasons to hate on myself for smoking too much weed would be because I give up other things that I know I'd enjoy, but I decide to smoke instead. And people will say, and I've, I've said this in the past, that you know, smoking weed is just going to enhance what your personality already is. So if you're a lazy person, you like just sitting around watching movies all day, you'll most probably continue to do that. But if you're quite creative, um, if you play music, if you play sport, whatever you enjoy, you know, smoking weed is basically just going to enhance that. Depending on your environment, of course, but if you're in a comfortable environment, I feel like it just enhances anything that you already find enjoyable. So, that plays on, you know, what I said before about it's just going to enhance whatever kind of personality you are. But, there does come a time when you have been 
a regular smoker for, for years and years and years and years when you just get sick of it. You just get sick of it. You get sick of being in that vice, the vice that marijuana has. And it's an addictive substance. It's psychologically addictive. Uh, it makes you feel good. Um, it takes away your problems. It numbs out certain feelings if you want to. It gives me a good sleep. It increases my appetite. So there's loads of reasons why I would enjoy it, but at the end of the day, there's nothing like actually having a nice, fresh, clear, sober mind. There's nothing like it. So, 1st of January 2020, we're embarking on at least a month sober. But what that means is that before then, I've got a bit of weed and I've got a bit of time and I've got some videos to watch. So what we're going to do, I've got a selection of like six videos to do with marijuana in sports. And it's most likely going to talk about the benefits. So while I enjoy some of my final times for the next month smoking, um, we're going to watch these videos. And so I'm going to enjoy, well, I guess a few puffs of a joint at the start of each video. We're going to sit back and, w and watch it. At the end of it, I'm going to give you my opinions. Um, and I feel like I am quite qualified for, for this type of video. You know, I feel like a, f a few of you out there would, would also be quite qualified to comment on these videos. And, and, I, and I encourage you to do that. So I've talked enough. We've got my green beanie on for reasons you will now be aware of. And let's get into this, guys. Actually, I've still got a roll of fucking joint. I've got a, a grinder full of, um, full of green here. People ask me, oh, what, what kind of green is that? Mate, I've got no fucking idea. I've never had any idea. I've only really realized, I've only really um, started to understand the difference between a sativa and an indica. And then some people are saying that they're so cross-blended now that there is no such thing as a difference between a sativa and an indica plant. If I could choose, I would stay the hell away from any of these heavy, heavy, heavy strains of marijuana. The ones that do, you know, regardless of whether you're a creative person or not, you're going to want to just sit down and possibly fall asleep. And that is the kind of weed that I don't want. I don't like that. I like the weed that uplifts you. I like something that's going to uplift me, you know, I guess, get that sparkle in your eye, literally. So that is a little bit of talk on, on marijuana, the substance. Uh, the first video we're going to watch today is going to be called the biggest stoners in professional sports. Following that, we're going to watch a video called Snoop Dogg Rants About Marijuana in Sports and Antonio Brown. And that's going to be interesting. Third video, I think 85% of the league smoked, which is a, a round table session, former NBA players on cannabis in the NBA. The fourth video is going to be called Using Weed to Save Football. Uh, chasing strains. So I think that's about American football. So we're going to watch. It's by Vice Sports. Vice is a fantastic channel. If you don't watch Vice documentaries, please get onto it. Uh, fifth video is uh, Stephen A. and Max Kellerman having a heated debate over marijuana in the in the NBA. And the final video of the day is called Carving on Cannabis with a Snowboard Gold Medalist. And that looked interesting because I feel like it's going to be following, um, you know, a very successful snowboarder who also smokes weed and most probably does it whilst snowboarding, which I can tell you right now, guys, sounds like the most fun anyone could ever have in their entire fucking life. Getting up to the top of a mountain with a couple of joints in your pocket with a mate, sitting down on the top of the mountain in that fresh, fresh white snow, enjoy a wee smoke, put the lighter away and say, right, let's go and enjoy a 10, 15 minute ride down the hill. I mean, you talk about buzzing. That's buzzing. All right, so I'm gonna roll this up. I'll be back here shortly to watch The Biggest Stoners in Professional Sports by a YouTube channel called TYT Sports. And the description says, we put together a list of the pro athletes who smoke weed the most. Rick Strom and Brett Ehrlich break it down. Nick minute. So I guess, I guess as far as marijuana in uh, NFL, the one name that was always thrown around was Ricky Williams, and now I know why. And I really enjoyed that video actually. If you haven't seen it, I did a reaction on Ricky Williams, thirty for thirty was it? It's pretty long. It was about an hour long, and um, you know people had recommended Ricky Williams, but never said why. And so I watched it with an open mind, and it was obviously about his choice to. Uh, what did he do? He, he failed two drug tests because he couldn't stop smoking. Then he, he did 
stopped smoking. But then he purposely failed his third drug test so that he would he would be kicked out of the NFL. And in his year post being kicked out, he went and discovered himself spiritually and then decided, no, you know what? I'm not done. I'm coming back. I can't remember the intricacies of it, but anyways, guys, we're about to watch a, a video. The biggest stoners in professional sports. It's going to be good. Welcome back, everybody. My Hello. name is Rick Strom. I'm Brad Ehrlich. This is Ellen DeGeneres. And we are here to talk about sports. And we're not just talking about it with anyone. We're talking about it with you. And really, I feel like over the course of this show, we really bonded as people. I agree. And souls. Yes. I would have spiritually. Think. Yes. Where do you, let's What's your talk. sign? Pisces. What? Pisces. Sagittarius. WKRP Cincinnati. <laughs> Anyway, so what are we talking about? I forget. This is the we're highest. Talking, we're talking. This conversation kind of leads into what we're talking about on this segment, which is the highest athletes in sports. Right. Not rankings. And my blood is on this list. We'll get to it, and I'll tell you which. Okay. Guess which person on the list yeah. of Rolling Stone's highest athlete. When we get to it, say, I think this is your cousin. I didn't put them in order, okay. by the way. But here is what. Was it Cheech or Chong? Which one's the smaller one? Cheech. Cheech. All right, so Cheech was asked by YouTuber Ellie Sekbeck, a uh, good channel um, on sports and mainly boxing, a lot of good interviews as well. So he interviewed Cheech on what it is about athletes using marijuana. Here was Cheech's answer. You know a lot of fighters, MMA fighters, like to smoke. This should be good. Eat the pain. What do you think about that? Not just MMA fighters, the greatest athlete in the world, Michael Phelps. Yeah. You know? I mean, he won more gold medals than anybody, and was the first thing he did was suck on a big bomb. <laughs> and not just fighters, but entertainers, everybody. You remember that? You remember when Michael Phelps got busted at a party, smoking on a bong? So do I. <laughs> Abdul-Jabbar played eight years past his prime because he only smoked pot. He never drank. He never did any any kind of uh, drugs. The only drug he ever did was pot. And uh, it's been proven. By me. I, Tommy <laughs> Chong. <laughs> Cheech. That was Tommy Chong, dude. Oh, I thought... It, it, Craig. That was Chong. Bro, we don't need studies. We don't need references. It's proven. That, that was Tommy... Cheech. You said we, you said who's the smaller one? And I was like, well, Cheech Merritt is the smaller guy, yeah. Tommy Chong is the bigger guy. Or at least to me anyway. Or maybe it's just because Tommy Chong talks like this and Cheech talks faster. And like, I'm sorry, that's Tommy Chong. Okay, it's This Chong. is the guy who's the voice of, in the movie Zootopia, which is a film for kids, essentially plays like the stoned ass <laughs> yoga instructor. It's Are like, you kidding me? Yeah, he's like, oh, I remember she showed up, man, the other day. <laughs> That was it. Uh, it was. He was? That 70s show? That's Tommy Chong. Yeah. All right, so Tommy Chong was talking about the highest, uh, how athletes get high. I just love how he's like, yeah, hey, he's sucking on a big bomb. Here's some people I'd like to throw under the bus right now. <laughs> uh, Green Abdul Jabbar. And actually, he, he seems pissed off. This guy on the left actually seems genuinely pissed off right now. It's like, bruh, I think you need that bong. He made Rolling Stones list. He was caught carrying six grams of marijuana at the Toronto airport. That's never a good idea. But in 1998... Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So he played 20 years. He's a Hall of Famer. Doesn't he have the point scoring record? Or maybe he's second. Instant one. Caught carrying six grams of marijuana at Toronto airport. Paid $500 fine. And that would be completely legal now, I believe. Incident number two. Arrested on DUI charge. Is that under the influence of drugs or alcohol? All you had to do like was pay like a $500 fine and they're like, all right, we'll see you later. -y. And then the second time uh, he was arrested on a Dewey charge in 2000, obviously nothing ever really occurred. Why are we even looking at this? This is 10 years after he finished playing. For Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He has said, by the way, that he suffers from terrible migraines. Which could be true. I I'm think a lot of these athletes, they have some general pain that they suffer from during and after their career. Well, and so I think that's why folks... NBA, NFL, uh, UFC, NFL are who is on our list. Okay, gotcha. So, yes, I would have to agree. I think that's a totally fine. Let's I'm sorry, guys. I'm feeling right now the exact way that most of you do when you're watching my videos when I keep talking and keep talking and keep talking and all you want to do is get into the fucking meat and potatoes of the, vi the video. They're doing the exact same thing. I'm hoping they've got a 
comprehensive list of, of athletes. That's what I wanted to know. Let's go through the list. Alright, let's go through it. Oh! Boom, there you go. So, Browns receiver Josh Gordon also made the list. He estimates he was bringing in $10,000 a month in weed sales while in college, he told SI. Gordon had previously told GQ in a recent article they smoked marijuana and drank alcohol probably at, before probably every game in college. He Baylor, drunk as well? National Football League. That wasn't the worst thing going on in Baylor, by the way. That's mm. how you get away with that. No, absolutely Actually, not. Actually, I can't remember what happened. He got cut from the Browns, then they brought him back the Patriots. And has he got cut from them as well? Hey, Art Bryles. Uh, Nate Diaz went so far to call himself the number one athletic stoner besides Michael Phelps. There he yep. is again. There you See, go. See, Nate Diaz is the one that threw Michael Phelps under the bus. Not Chongy. Uh, has no qualms lighting up his vape in front of the spotlight of TV cameras. Meanwhile, brother Nick has become the ultimate marijuana martyr after years of bong-inspired braggadocio. Uh, the guy even once told the LA Times, quote, I can pass a drug test in eight days with herbal cleansers. I drink 10 pounds of water and sweat out 10 pounds of water every That's day. That's the thing, is this Why argument, that? the argument against smoking wheat would be not one of performance enhancement. Right. Uh, unless it, I could see like basketball shooting. If the game, oh. if it slows the game down for you, if it gives you more feel, if it relaxes you in the moment to focus. But... We always but like say guys are taking Adderall it's like, to relax yeah. as well. So if anything, they're trying to say that you know any performance enhancement in sports through marijuana would be psychologically enhancing, not physically enhancing, not performance enhancing, not not athletic performance enhancing. Did I just say enhancing like six times in a row? Enhancing sounds weird to me now. Focus. To focus, it's not for. It's for focus. Michael Phelps, it's obviously not slowing him down. Those things are, if you smoke weed, you'd be afraid that someone wouldn't become an Olympic athlete. These guys prove it wrong. I think it's a messaging thing that's out there. I just don't think there's any, like, negative effect to it. All right, really quick, we have two more. Uh, one more, excuse me. I could, well, we could go down a rabbit hole talking about the negative effects because, well, actually, I've, I've made videos in the past talking about them, but I have actually deleted them from my channel due to, I don't know, just went through a phase where I thought, I basically saw videos of me talking about weed, even though I did talk very openly and honestly about, you know, the good and the bad. Uh, I think that any videos discussing marijuana on my channel was going to hurt my chances of, of, of uh, I guess, being picked up by some sort of sports team. Obviously it hasn't happened anyway, so I'm bringing weed back to the channel, but like I've just mentioned, I'm going to have a break next month, so, yeah. Lungs. Ricky Williams turned to the sticky icky. There he is. Rolling Stones writes. That's a sticky, yeah. Yeah, yeah. After getting diagnosed with clinical depression and social anxiety disorder, Williams was in and out of the league following not one, not two, but three failing, excuse me, drug tests, all in two years' time and bouncing between the Saints, Dolphins, Ravens, and the CFL's Toronto Argonauts. Argonauts. And then there's also Damon Stoudemire who, when they were driving from Seattle to Portland after a game, he got pulled over with Rasheed Wallace. There was marijuana residue found on the floor of the Yellow Homer. And then also, so? he tried to bring one and a half of marijuana hell. onto a plane. It was wrapped in aluminum foil, trying to pass their security. Even Craig is laughing. One and a half ounces? Oh my god, I was going to say, I've, I've definitely uh, taken a bud or two onto a plane, but not one and a half ounces, and definitely not wrapped in aluminium foil. Yeah. So much weed to just like, a lot of in weed. a foil. It's like, sir, we can all smell that. But You're just wrapping it in foil. What, they're like, oh, it's my sandwich. In... Yeah. Size that sandwich I'm bringing. Why would you wrap it in foil? I don't think uh, like other, um... I don't know. My cousin was on the list, Bill Lee, from Boston Red Sox. Really? Yeah, yeah, What did he do? He would put weed on his pancakes. Um, and they would throw, when he played in Canada, or he played after his MLB career, they uh -huh. would just throw weed at him on the field. Names a spaceman Lee. Why? Wow, that's a waste of weed. He would get it. He would take it. He said, thank you. Um, and then if you read his book, Have Glove, Will Travel, he talks about trying to buy weed in Venezuela after he finished the, pro, the pros and just going to... I'll like tell you what, I will be writing a book of... Actually, you know, there was a book title at... I was going to start writing, but I haven't yet because I haven't actually reached the age of 30, but it was 30 mistakes I made before the age of 30 and how you can avoid them. 30 mistakes I made before the age of 30 and how you can avoid them. If I ever do pen that book, I'll let you know. But I've definitely got some overseas weed stories and that's where I was going with that. Like these drug dealers places where they put like a giant 
bag of it. Like, that's all we sell is in bags. And trying to scare... And he would do peyote and... It was back in the day of, like, the I know, 70s I know. The MLB, where people were just really, really stoned. Peyote is a real hardcore Phil Jackson drug, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's what he would do when he was with, uh... When he was in Minnesota. No, Montana. That's mm-hmm. where he's from. I got that right in trivia once. He did. First, first round. The only one. Um... I'm sorry, mate, but I learned absolutely nothing from that. Uh, in fact, I kind of already gave you the major story, which was Ricky Williams myself. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. I will be back very shortly to continue this series. The next video on the list is called Snoop Dogg Rants About Marijuana in Sports and Antonio Brown. Um, all I've got to say about that is, you know, whether you smoke or not, how could you not want to watch that video? So I'll see you back here shortly, and we'll crack into it. Peace out. I swear I like your style. Put you in Chanel cause it's just perfect for your smile. Girl, I swear for you, I run the world, I'd run the miles. The way you look at me, I think I'm going.